Okay guys, George here and we're at the workbench again and this time we're going to talk a little bit about motors. Now as you can see I've got a handful of different types of motors here on my table. Uh, some of them you may recognize, some of them you may not. But what I want to talk about here is when it comes to isolating the motor or insulating the motor from the track power. Now as you can see here in this diagram, when the model is designed uh, as a DC model, you're going to see how track power is picked up through the wheels and usually directed to the motor to power the model. Now what we want to do is we want to interrupt that and put a decoder in the middle of that so that way the decoder picks up the power coming from the track and then in turn sends power to the appropriate places on the model and that includes the motor. Now, in some cases, like you'll see here, this Atlas S4, a lot of times that power is transferred physically through the frame of the model to the motor. And so what we have to do is we have to insulate it. And in many cases, you'll see this Atherin Blue Box motor where you'll see that the tabs along the top are what transfer power to the brushes of the motor and on the bottom you usually will see two teeth that are usually here in these recessions that stick down and touch the frame of the motor now what does it mean when we want to isolate now what we want to do is basically create a physical barrier now in some in some motors like this Northwest shortline motor here you can see that there's actually two tabs that are physically isolated from the casing of the motor that you would then basically solder your plus and minus wires to. So on this Canon motor, you can see that we've got the two terminals with our wires coming off of the back of the motor. And so these are some examples, but how do we fix these motors that are physically connected? Well, in the case of this Athern model, what you can do is you can remove these clips as you see I've done here and solder a wire to the underside of the clip. Now you can do it here. A lot of times you can do it right here in this recession. And then when you put this back into the model, you can actually lay some electrical tape or capped on tape or whatever underneath this as an extra physical insulator to make sure that the motor is physically isolated. So now this gray wire becomes our motor minus that's going to go to the decoder. Now you would do the same thing here on top. You would solder a wire here on this top clip to the motor plus. Now when you're removing these clips, you can simply grab the end and twist, but you wanna be careful. Normally there's a spring located right there. That's what pushes this brush onto the armature and creates that circuit all the way through. Now this is a scrap motor I have laying around, so I've already harvested the spring, but you can see where that spring resides. But this just clips into place, so when you're doing your soldering, you want to remove. Now what happens in the case of this S4? Now when we look at this, on, mo on the early S4s that Atlas did, the power was transferred through the frame and then physically to the motor, but how did that happen? Well, on the top here, we can see and I'm going to remove this motor here so we can see it better through the camera. But you can see we have this hexagonal piece here, and this is where the brushes are stored in this motor. So if you were to remove or service the brushes, you would just unscrew that and the brush would fall out. But what about the other side? Well, what happens is there is a screw that goes through the chassis of the model and goes into here. And that physically connects. But how does it touch the brush? Well, in this case, you can see how this metal casing now moves underneath and there's a metal washer here underneath the brush cap. So this is a physical connection that you may not necessarily realize is here. So your motor is connected to the frame here and the power is transferred from the frame to that screw, which is then in turn connected to the metal casing. That metal casing, which has absolutely nothing to do with the rotation of the motor, is then physically connected to the brush right here. And that brush is then becomes the negative pole for that motor. Now you can see on the other side here, we've got this big plastic insulator to make sure that the casing of the motor as it comes through does not physically touch 
the bushing on this model. So in some cases, in this particular model, a lot of people will go through and run some insulative tape under here and use a plastic screw to mount the motor. Now you can do that, or you can carefully remove this screw cap for the brush, replace that washer with a piece of plastic insulation, and then put that back in place, and now you've got an insulated pole. When you solder your lead down here, it will run up to the decoder and then give you full power control of the motor. Now this is just one example. Other th examples I've seen, um, if you look carefully at this in picture here from a River OC GG1 from many years ago, you'll see this little brass clip or bracket that looks like it's part of the motor, but it's actually doing the same thing as what our washer did here on this Atlas motor. It's basically taking the casing of the motor and making it continuous to the pole of the terminal of the motor so that that way when that model picks up power from the track and carries it through the frame it's now physically connected to the motor pole so that that way it will d deliver power to the motor so when you're doing an installation in this particular model you'll want to make sure that you look for those type of clips or brackets or whatever the case may be that's potentially routing power to the motor brushes. And that's one of the things that you're gonna to need to do when you're doing your insulation. So guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. Be sure to check out other tips from the workbench. And also, if you have a tip from the workbench that you would like to see done, please send us an email at sales at soundtracks.com and we'll try to address it uh, in a future episode. So be sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.